Hi everyone, in this video I'm working through question 6 part C of the HSC extension 1 exam from 2008. So it's a two part question, so as usual I'll work through each part in a separate video, and in this first video I'll be focusing on part 1. The setup to the question is we're told to let P and Q be positive integers with P less than or equal to Q. And then for part 1, we're told to use the binomial theorem to expand 1 plus X to the P plus Q, and hence write down the term of 1 plus x to the p plus q on x to the q, which is independent of x. Or in other words, when we do this expansion, which of the terms in that expansion won't have an x value next to it? It'll just be a constant, basically. So yeah, let's take a look. So here I've just written up the facts of the question. Um, we're given this guide to use the, the binomial expansion of 1 plus x to the p plus q. And that can get us on our way to then thinking about this whole term, which has an x to the q also in the denominator. And, and we're told to note that in, in this setup, p will be less than or equal to q. So um, in terms of the expansion, 1 plus x to the p plus q, that will basically be written as the sum from k is equal to naught up to our exponent here, so p plus q of p plus q c k x to the k. That, that's the basic expansion. And it's probably worth noting that since um, p is less than or equal to q, um, when we're counting from naught up to p plus q, we're inevitably going to hit p and q by themselves before we get to p plus q. But the way it will go, we know we're going to hit p before q, so the counting will go zero. 1, 2, and so on, up to first P, and then it'll keep going, and then we'll hit Q, and then eventually we'll hit P plus Q. So that's probably just worth noting to be really clear how we'll expand this in getting from 0 up to P plus Q. So we can write this as it'll be P plus Q C naught, X to the naught, plus P plus Q C 1, x to the 1, and so on, and then we get up to p plus q c p, x to the p, and then we keep going, and we'll get a um, p plus q c q, x to the q, and then we'll keep going, and finally we'll have a p plus q c p plus q, x to the p plus q. So that's um, our initial step of doing our binomial expansion of this numerator. But we've got to remember we're actually dealing with this whole term. So now we can put in our denominator and see how the dividing by x to the q plays out. So therefore we can say 1 plus x to the p plus q on x to the q. That'll equal p plus q c naught x to the naught on x to the q plus p plus q c one x to the one on x to the q and so on and then we'll get p plus q c p x to the p on x to the q and so on and then we'll have our p plus q c q x to the q on x to the q and then we'll keep going and finally we get p plus q c p plus q x to the p plus q on x to the q. And given we're focused on the term that's independent of x, uh, what becomes important is that these um, numerators and denominators with x's in them will all still simplify to be x to the something except for this term that's got both x to the q on the top and the bottom. That perfectly cancels so that this p plus q c q effectively is just a constant all by itself with, with um, no x connected to it. So it's worth just pointing out just for completeness that p can be equal to q because p is less than or equal to q. But in that case, we're still okay because effectively if p is equal to q, then really you can think of that as just being no p on the way, because p is q, so they're one and the same. So 
here you won't really have this term and you'll just end up again with x to the q on x to the q leaving just the one independent term, the term independent of x, which is this p plus q c q. So I think that, that means we can now conclude that um, the term of 1 plus x to the p plus q on x to the q that is independent of x will be equal to p plus q c q and that's how you tackle that question so really just a matter of um, knowing your binomial expansion um, and really just following the guidance and, and i guess being careful with how you count between zero and p plus q noting that you'll hit a p and a q on the way and and from there it falls out quite neatly um, because we get this this situation where the x to the q um, in the numerator cancels out perfectly with the denominator so that we do get this constant term all by itself being independent of x. So hopefully you could follow along with that and it made sense. So what I'll do is in the next video I'll work through part two of this question. Alright, tick boom!